And everybody, it's Tim Razor with the Free Asset Management just before 4 o'clock here on a Wednesday night. So very quickly, stock numbers, market levels, before, 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 before you and I begin our sojourn into the markets this evening. Uh, real quickly, look, I want to get to the chase of the video. I think that there is a, um, I don't want to say a larger move higher coming, uh, but you could have a, a little bit of a snapback rally here. Uh, but look, I don't want it to be lost on you because it's not lost on me. We are still in a bear market, right? So we're in a, or as otherwise known as a BM. Okay, so we're in a bear market. But some of these bear market rallies, as you know, are so vicious. And I'm going to show you how this sets up uh, on the charts and how far um, the S&Ps and NASDAQ could traverse and uh, who might be leading that charge. But tell you what, very quickly, you know what, let me get the admin stuff out of the way here. And then we'll we'll dive right into uh, what took place today and where I think things are setting up and where you might find interest in paying attention to those things. Setting up, look, any questions, concerns, comments, you take umbrage with anything that I'm saying. All you have to do is hit revereasset.com on your uh, on your smart device or your uh, desktop laptop. You can scroll down on the about right there about strategy. You can see the portfolios. Uh, that we run here and shop, the hybrids, the cores, scroll all the way down to the leadership, and there you can find all of us that work with Revere. So there's Dan, uh, the owner, uh, as I refer to him as America's fiduciary, I'm telling you, you'll never find a better person to talk to if you want to talk uh, economics of a situation or your personal economics uh, with life insurance and annuities. We don't sell any of those. There's a reason why uh, they're not investments, and we here. Yeah, there's better ways to do things and products you've been sold that have high commissions. Um, and whether you become a client or not, it's, it doesn't matter. We're here to actually help and empower individual investors and get them away from the prize that sell those types of things. There, And then you can find Don and Hunter. Don and Hunter do all the portfolio work. So what goes on the watch list, what comes off, buy, sells. You want to talk to them. They make themselves available to you. That's the beauty of our shop because, you know, we're not like everybody else in this business. We're transparent. We give our strategies away. Uh, we do everything we can to help you, knowing that when potentially you need help or more importantly, like your loved ones, your friends and family, when they need help, you trust us and you send them to us. We don't advertise. Everything we do is word of mouth, and that's how uh, we've grown uh, multifold because of you. And then there I am, TimRegressive.com. You can find any of us on Twitter. You see our handles here. Here I am on Twitter. Uh, at TJ Razor is how you find me. My DMs are open, so they show up right here. Uh, here's my handle. So you don't even have to follow me. You can just send me a DM. DMs are so much easier for me than email, so be feel free to absolutely contact me there. And then stock news market lovers, these videos, they are for what? They're for your edification purposes only. They're never ever doing this advice. advice, one advice, advice, seek advice. All you have to do is, in fact, give us a call. So real quickly, before I get uh, to the S&Ps and what's taking shape here. So uh, j -Pal. Right, so JP, right? Uh, JP uh, raises the market by three quarters of a percent. Now, this is the biggest hike since what, 1994. But I need to show you something on a five minute chart because the market, you know, before the presser, the market didn't really like it. And there's kind of a um, kind of the way these markets goes. So the market trades up to 30, 3796, almost 3800. And then, I mean, it sells off to the depths of hell. Well, it felt like it if you're watching the markets. And you can see that this low here was, oh, let's see, at 13.30, 37.23. And what did j Powell say starting around shortly after 13.30? He doesn't think that, um, he doesn't think that 0.7 rate hikes are going to become the norm. Okay. And so it's super interesting, right? He doesn't think that these rate hikes are going to be normal. I know a lot of you out there are like, I'm the same way, by the way. Inflation is really bad. And then, what do you mean? Like, we need to, we needed a 1% rate hike, like 100 basis points. We needed to kill this thing now and get ahead of it. Well, they told you they weren't going to do any 75s before, and they did a 75. So I guess that's a little bit of progress. But speaking of progress, Jay Powell wants to see progress. And I want to show you what progress might look like to j Powell, other than uh, core CPI, other than PPI, the producers index. Let me show you what you can look at at home other than, uh, other than reports that are a month old, more than a month old. So let me, let me show you this real quick. I'm gonna show you this on Revere Asset because 
we talked about this on this week's podcast. This week's podcast is super popular. And I can't thank you enough for uh, for engaging with it, downloading it, listening to it, watching it. Uh, I'll show you the video one. So uh, gas futures may signal a peak inflation or inflation peak. And so let me click on this here. And I cover these charts um, uh, in depth in this week's podcast. And I, if you haven't listened to it, please do. It, it would, I would love it if you did because it makes the videos I think that we do here at Revere Five Nights a Week, it makes them that much better because now you're getting the context behind the thought process from myself, from Hunter, from Don. And then when Danny um, Danny joins us every week, uh, you'll have to hear his economic perspective as well. But anyway, I said, you know, I wonder if inflation, maybe not as peak, but as plateaued. And I gave you two examples. And I these are some examples that, and Jay Powell cited energy today, talked about energy a lot. And so what does energy look like to Jay Powell? And so I talked about gasoline futures and gas is a crest above $5 a gallon. On average, I talked about the gasoline futures, with RBOB. And so you can see like RBOB, what the hell's RBOB? RBOB, right, there it is. Uh, forward slash RV for all you think of swimmers. And I said, I wonder if gasoline, if this plateau is telling you that it's peaked. And we looked at a couple of different charts together. And so here's today, here's Tuesday, here's Monday. And look, some of you might say, well, it's only peaked because it's deflationary. We're not going as far anymore. Look, de demand is demand, whether whether it's killed by high prices uh, or Jay Powell comes in and kills, crushes demand, demand destruction. Uh, gasoline futures have come off. They've come off from a high of 432 and they're now down 389. You're like, well, Percentage wise, Tim, tell me how much of a move that is. So I'll show you how you can do it yourself. So here's the high. Here is, uh, where do we go at? 389. So we'll just raise it up a bit. Down 10%. So gas prices in, um, we'll just call it two weeks, uh, 10 trading days have come off about 10%. That is a start. I'm not saying that's the end all, the be all. Inflation is over. I don't, don't mishear me. Please don't misquote me. Say it's a start. What else might look like peak inflation to J-PAL? Or, or let's just use the words plateauing inflation. And we talked a lot about crude oil. And look, crude has come off. It's, uh, it's found support to 21. Maybe it bounces here. Down 2.66%. And so I, I think that that's super interesting. Um, but the look, if we're being honest here, the, the flip side, maybe crude's been holding up the parts of the market. And if crude gives up the ghost, does that mean the markets give up the ghost and the markets collapse? I think on Friday, I'll have a clearer picture of where this is headed and we can talk about it. Uh, because after a Fed announcement, the true move really isn't known um, until a couple of days later. And henceforth, our journey together into the podcast that takes you into the weekend. So I have more to say about this uh, in a couple of days. But now, why could market rally? Again, bear market, I get it, everything's bad. But um, some of your sharpest, most vicious rallies, okay, take place in um, in the throes of the bear market. So a couple of things here is that we look at a chart of the S&Ps. Um, so one, we had this massive options expiration, okay? So it's called OX. It's quarterly. There's a lot of puts that market makers would like to expire worthless and have to pay out on them. So perhaps it behooves them to keep prices elevated. Okay. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but this is a record quarterly expiration for options. Okay. Super interesting if you ask me. Two, and we'll look at this chart too. We're going to look at the old put call. So uh, let me get my marker disengaged and bring up the put call ratio chart. And so when I'm looking here at the put call ratio, uh, you can see here, and I talked about this on Friday, here's Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, and now there was Friday. And I lamented that this was the highest it's been in all of 2022. Well, it went up even higher on Tuesday, right? And so what does that mean? I described to you the boat, right? If everyone's on one side of the boat, meaning uh, the put side of the boat, it typically capsizes over, just like if everybody uh, down here is on the call side of that same boat, that's a letter C and a really poorly drawn boat, uh, the markets will do the exact opposite. And you can see that we've had these peaks, we come down and now, are we about to do that? This is the S&P chart on the bottom of this, um, of this put call ratio chart. Super interesting. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but when you've gotten these high put call ratio readings, 
you found at least short term bottoms. I'm not saying the bottom, I'm saying shorter term bottoms. And I wonder if that's what we found. And, and quite frankly, I don't know. But neither do you, but I'm telling you, this is a pretty interesting scenario setting up. And I want to add one more thing to this. And so as I clear the markers off, <clears throat> this is the 10 day moving average for the put call ratio. I really think it tells you a lot because it can tell you, like even though put call ratio has come off, it's still at 0.9. When it's at 0 0.88, 0 0.9, that is still people buying puts. It's a moving average, it's a little slower, right? And so when it's pointed up like this and right here at the 0.9 level, it's still a very bearish market. So what's the most scared animal in the woods? It's a bear. Uh, they see a lot of buying. What do they want to do? They want to turn and run or they want to cover their, sh cover their short positions so they don't lose any money. And that whole buying cycle, whether it's whether you deem it proper, correct, right, or not, um, that buying um, generates other buying just from the act of short covering. And then before you know it, you got a rally on your hands. And so where, if the markets are to rally, where could they rally to? So let's take a look at that. So here are the S&Ps. And so we're on a daily chart. So let me just orient here. Oh, we, my friends, are on a daily chart. And so when I'm looking at this daily chart, I just took the recent high. I mean, by recent, I mean May 30th, right? Somewhere in there. And I took the recent low yesterday. And what would be a normal Fibonacci retracement for this level? 50%, right? And that's all the way up here at 39.55. Could we get there? Quite frankly, that's, that is a, in this market environment, that is a bridge far. First, so you can see we got stymied at the five here, right? Rejected at the five. We'd have to get through the five. Find the eight at 3,900 and then make our way to 39.55. It, look, it, if you can get through the five, I, there's, there's probably a chance you get to that level. <clears throat> I have, n I, nobody knows if the market has it in there. It, if the market's going to ma potentially make that move, it's going, you'll see it tomorrow, right? On the backs of the S&Ps up 1.43%. And now we'll do the same thing for the NASDAQ, right? And I'm using the futures here, so you can do the same work that you see on your charts at home. The NASDAQ has to get through the eight. You can see same thing, got stymied at the five, which is the purple line here. Uh, 12,090, we'll just call it 12,100. You're at 11,626. Um, markets don't have to round just because they fell 10% in a couple of days. doesn't mean they have to bounce, but if there's a bounce scenario in place, I'm building you that picture right now. Quarterly options expiration, a lot of puts, the market makers have a desire to let buy are worthless, not in the money. Uh, keep prices elevated, uh, potentially. I'm not saying, you're like, what are these market makers doing? They are magic people. Uh, put call ratio, I've shown you this. Um, and then I'm giving you a couple targets. And then there's one other thing I'll show you here as we wind our way through the other two indices. Uh, same chart, rejected at the five, 3177. Uh, yeah, 31776, excuse me, um, for the Dow. And it's the same chart set up for the small caps. So what could lead the charge? What are two stocks that could positively impact both the NASDAQ and the S&P 500? I'm gonna show you first Apple. Uh, did, did, did Apple turn today? Well, up 2%, yeah, well, yes, it turned, Tim, of course, it looks like the NASDAQ turned. Yeah, but here's the thing that's interesting to me about Apple. So Apple came down to and this, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but this is the high to low during the COVID bottom. And it came down and found support at this 618. Oh, what is this little level right there? Let's take a gander, huh? So I'm going to zoom in. And so Apple actually came down to this same level recently, held serve like it's done the last three days and then proceeded to make a move higher. If that repeats itself, if that is to repeat itself and Apple is to get through, uh, let's say up to 140-ish, well, that could be a really nice move uh, coinciding with the NASDAQ and the S&Ps. I believe it is the heavily weighted stock in the NASDAQ 100. And then let's look at Tesla. Is Tesla the number 10 weighted stock? 
in the S&P 500. Is Tesla signaling something here? Very interesting to me. And so, uh, yeah, we didn't even get to the recent bottom, found support, and now it's trying to make a move. If Tesla can uh, get constructive, try to make a move, if Apple can find a intermediate bottom, I'm not saying the bottom, I'm saying an intermediary bottom, then perhaps we've got something on our hands to test those 50% retracement levels on the Fibonacci charts I just showed you a few minutes ago on the S&P and the NASDAQ. If they can't, if these two, you need you need these two stocks to kind of lead the charge here. If they can't, then perhaps perhaps what I'm talking about doesn't uh, doesn't pan out. So, three last things. What does all this really hinge on? So let's go back to the S&P chart. So we'll look at the S&P futures, and I'm going to put it on a five minute basis. Uh, let's see here. You know, we'll do spy. I'm gonna do spy on a five minute basis, okay? And I'll get rid of all this fit work here because it's not applicable to what we're talking about right now. So a five minute chart, uh, selected, there we go. And you can see here the day, how the day, here's the day start. Day starts, there's the low, and then there we go. And so what, did, what, what moved, what changed the dollar? So what happened? So the dollar spiked high. Look at, look at the time frame. The dollar spikes high. Um, and it isn't until the dollar comes off that the S&Ps start to go up. 105, 788, and coincidentally, when the dollar started coming off, dollar debt finished down over six tenths of a percent. That's a big deal. When the dollar started coming off, look at what the TNX did. Same scenario. TNX spikes on the announcement, comes off, and then the markets are allowed or able to take off. So now let's look at these on a daily chart. TNX. If TNX can just can pull back a little bit, it should give a reprieve. Uh, to equities, and it's the same thing with the dollar. If the dollar can pull back to some kind of support, like say 104 ish, or if it pulls if, for some reason, if it would pull, if it were to pull all the way back to the 21, which would make sense, doesn't have to, um, then you'll see markets. By the way, remember when markets I said the recent high in markets, look at 530, remember that's from a few minutes ago, look what the dollar was doing, yeah, it's coming off. So if the dollar can come off here, um, and we'll see if it can, then you should see price support bullishly for equities. And now I'll leave you here with one, one big last thing that I think you want to focus in on. Let's look at the S&P futures, okay? And then I'm going to get this up on a, a monthly chart. So here's a monthly chart, and, you, and those have been following my work for years. You know my work with the ATR charts. And so here, my friends, is the mean. There's plus one, plus two, plus three, minus one, minus two, minus three. Now, if you're new to my work, like I don't quite understand the ATR charts. What I want you to do is um, you can get a hold of us. Just hit the phone button. It's, it's a long email, so if you just hit the phone button, you're gonna get America's fiduciary and he will explain it. You can always email me, uh, but it, it, uh, I'll tell you that if you email me and you're like, I don't understand the HR charts, I'm probably gonna explain it to you on the podcast. We just gotta reach out and we'll absolutely help you. So anyway, back to the HR charts. So here is minus, there was the mean, right? So there's minus one, minus two, and minus three. And we're on this monthly chart, it's a continuous chart of the S&P futures. And we come down to minus one, and hold and look now we definitely went down lower there's 2020 it's covid but where did we find support yep right in that zone of minus one well what about before covid tim the last time oh you mean 20 2018 when they tried to raise rates we came down in that zone of the minus one held it and started to move higher it's super interesting now we, we've just kind of entered the bear market recently, and I'll leave you with this because this John Earl is a really interesting follow on Twitter. 
the average, you can see if you follow them, oh, there's a message that just popped in the old machine. Maybe it's one of you. Uh, let's see, length of S&P 500 bear markets. So 2020 was the quickest, but you can see by month that the average is 19. Is it going to be that way again? Look, you can see eight months. Of course, this, this obviously, 62 months, it, it extends out this timeline. The, you're like, what about 07, 08, 17 months? So um, we're in early innings, folks. Okay, super early innings, but hopefully uh, this chart work and what we talk about here with beer helps provide some clarity and a, and, a, and a path forward for you at home. So with that, hope you have a great night and I will see you at the next update.